at core, there is a structural economic crisis, which in the big countries represents uh, financial, well, no, let me say this. It represents uh, a pyramid structure for all of the big economies. The United States has a finance pyramid economy, as, which as we know is unsustainable. Russia has an energy pyramid economy, which depends on increasing prices for energy. This cannot be sustained, largely because of some fool's luck by the United States. In the last three years, the United States has developed new technologies for extracting natural gas and oil to keep global energy prices from rising. They're not going to go down, but they're not going to go up either. In the short term, this is deadly for Russia. In the medium to long term, if Russia responds properly, it could be the very best thing for Russia. If Russia decides to develop its manufacturing again and move off of this energy pyramid economy, China has an export uh, pyramid economy, so it's dependent upon exports ever growing, and this cannot continue either. So all of these pyramid economies need to change. Now, the United States sees some return of manufacturing because this energy is actually making our electricity prices very low. Factories that previously had gone to Mexico, into China, are now coming back. Factories in places like Germany are considering coming to the United States because electricity prices are now 300% higher in Germany than they are in the United States it's because of this energy windfall. So if the United States can manage to rid itself of these austerity governments and this Tea Party, things might go very well. But it would have to also check or control its banking sector, its financial center, which it has thus far done almost nothing to do. Now, for Russia, mm -hmm. the problem that we see, I'm being told to slow down on this side and to yeah. speed up on this side. <laughs> for Russia, the problem is this. As I've said, and this goes back all the way to the 1960s, you've become dependent on your energy export sector. So this has to change. But it's not just that. It's also the financial sector. The chief issue is that much of the money that you could be using to rebuild your infrastructure is being sent to offshore banks in places like Latvia and Cyprus. So you're losing both tax revenue and investment capital. And as long as the money is leaving your country, you'll never fix your problems here. Now, ultimately, this money ends up going, oftentimes, to the major banks in West Europe and the United States. So they have an interest in seeing this system continue. So they will not stop it. You will have to. Meanwhile, referencing China, China has to figure out a way of consuming more of what it produces and dealing with its environmental crisis. Thus far, it's put much of its excess capital into real estate, and it's created a real estate bubble, just as we recently had in the West five years ago. So to sum up, the chief threats are austerity budgets, pyramid economy. Okay, so austerity budgets, pyramid economies, and financial, uh, you know, we could call it terrorism. So we have to address all three of these things and also be mindful of ecological dimensions of our crisis as well. All big challenges, but unless we address them, we will only continue seeing the middle class shrink and the stagnation continue. Thank you, and I'll be happy to take questions. Thank you. Sorry about rushing you. Уважаемые коллеги, пожалуйста, вопросы.